red wine sauce, otherwise known as red wine jus, classic French sauce. And I had a few questions on my last beef cheeks about it, um, which is actually a slightly different sauce to the one we did there, where we basically used the braising uh, liquid to, to make the sauce. Now, when I, I got asked to make this recipe, it's kind of a conflict, it's tricky. And, and I guess the thumbnail kind of explains why, why I'm a little bit conflicted. So when, when I make red wine sauce, I make it with this, which is beef stock that I've made myself. Um, you can see just how gelatinous this is. Uh, and that's because of the amount of time um, that I spent cooking this. So this cooked for like almost 30 hours, really low, really slow. And over that time, the, the gelatin builds up and gets extracted from the bones, which gives you a nice thick sauce. We used to also put pig strutters in our sauce because they're also really high in gelatin. This is just beef stock though. There's nothing else apart from beef bones in the stock. But this channel is more about uh, home cooking and, and kind of how our chef uh, executes cooking at home within the confines that you've got. Now, no one's gonna spend 30 hours making stock at home. If you are, go for it, hats off to you. When I'm cooking at home, I am making stock, right? Like maybe when I retire and I've got all the time in the world, I'll start making my own stocks at home. But for the time being, this is a reserve for my professional kitchen, my professional life. So I wanted to make two stocks side by side. I wanted to make one today with the stock that I made. Uh, and I wanted to make one with just, just this is shelf stable brought stock from the supermarket. I took it out of the packet because I kind of didn't want to, it's a complete disaster. I didn't want to annoy any companies, but um, the reason it's so thin compared to this is it says it on the packet. This is only cooked for three hours. This is cooked for 30 hours, this is cooked for three hours. So, and there's a big difference in the depth of flavor that you get as well. So can we make a delicious sauce from a shelf stable stock that you bought in the supermarket? Uh, I'm pretty sure we can. Uh, I know I can make a delicious sauce of this. I'm pretty sure we can make one with this, but let's make it together and hopefully uh, you can take something from this and uh, make some nice sauces at home. Before we go any further though, guys, please do me a huge favor and just smash that like button. It helps me out heaps, get that algorithm ticking so I can continue making these videos. All right, let's talk ingredients. So starting with the stock. So in here, I have two liters of um, beef stock and two liters of chicken stock. Both of them are the low sodium ones. You don't want the normal sodium ones or it will probably get salty. So three liters of stock in total. You can use all beef or I like to kind of split it up with a bit of chicken as well. Uh, this is three liters also of my own Hustman stock. And then here we've got beef trimming. So this is probably more than we'll need. We'll weigh out and make sure we're using the same amount in each stock so it's a fair comparison. But these are just um, uh, ebony, um, trimmings off beef cheeks. So super gelatinous, uh, you know, really delicious cut of meat in itself. And um, this is just gonna amplify that beefy flavor. So you don't need to use beef cheeks. You can use any beef trimmings you've got, but what you wanna do is go through and make sure all the hard fat's taken off them, or you're just gonna end up skimming that off anyway. So the stuff that you can see here is the silver skin. That's not fat, um, that's silver skin. And the intermuscular fat's fine. That's actually just gonna add flavor. But what, we'll, what you do wanna get rid of is the hard fat. And I've kind of already gone through this stuff when I was cleaning the cheeks, so there's not much hard fat left, but I don't know if you can see that, but that type of fat there, that would just render out and go into your sauce. And we'll talk about skimming later, but all you'd have to do is end up skimming that off anyway. So next, your Miripro with flavorful veg. Now I like to use shallots for, for sauces. I uh, like these banana shallots here, but they're kind of hard to get sometimes in Australia. I don't know why, but um, anyway, so just a brown onion will do instead of one. This is my last little shallot, so we'll leave them out. So onions, carrots, celery, garlic, and herbs. Now the trick is also don't go over with your herbs. If you have too much herbs, it just starts tasting like a pizza sauce or something. It's no good. So just re restrain yourself on herbs. And then wine. Now, as the great uh, Keith Floyd used to say, if you wouldn't drink it, don't cook with it. This is a key ingredient into this, this, um, this sauce that we're making. So make sure you're buying you know, decent wine. You don't need to buy the most premium wine ever. Um, I think this is like 10, 12 bucks a bottle of stuff. It's not expensive. Um, and you want, a, you want a pretty heavy wine. So this is a cab sav. Um, and we're gonna use wine. We're also gonna use some fortified wine, some port as well. So Mirapara, I'm not gonna bore you with this. It's pretty self-explanatory stuff. Uh, just cut it up into smaller size pieces, something like that. The only other thing worth mentioning here is I like to do my um, my softer mirepoix uh, separate so that you don't kind of blast it too much when you're caramelizing and getting color um, on this harder stuff. I'm doing two because obviously we're doing the comparison. 
So with the garlic, usually you just split it right down the middle, but again, comparison. So split that down the middle. No need to really peel it too much. If you've got loose stuff, you can take them off. Onions, so we'll do two onions each, one carrot each. Onions just into quarters. And I'm just gonna weigh out the beef trimmings and I reckon about a kilo. Time to start cooking. So we have the same size pot, same heat source, so these both are on duction. It's nice and fair. Um, this is where induction comes into its own. It's excellent for doing like sauces and stuff so it doesn't burn. Because this is a demonstration kitchen for Kilcoy Global Foods, this is, controls are on both sides. It's a little bit annoying, but that's okay. <laughs> so what we're gonna do is we're gonna sweat down or color our meat first. So once this has got good color on it, then we're gonna add the veggies. So we'll go meat first, and then we'll add our hard veggies by our soft veggies, uh, wine, and then stock. So I'm actually gonna label these so I don't forget. Home, homemade stock, this side. So neutral flavored oil. You don't want olive oil for this because you want high temperature. And obviously you need oil, but use as little as possible. And the other thing you wanna control is your salt levels. Now, obviously you need to season stuff, but when you're doing sauces and stuff like this, you gotta be careful because once it reduces, the salt level rises and then they become too salty. So we are gonna put a little bit of salt here at the start, but not much. And that just helps with the caramelization of the meat. All right, it's kind of hard to see, but that's what we're looking for. It's good, deep color. Lots of the Maillard reaction there. Uh, good base of corn on the bottom, so all the flavor on the bottom. Now we're gonna add our hard herb, our hard veg, carrots and onions. Start splitting those down. You also really want to make sure you're working the carrots and onions and you're getting good caramelization on these too. It's all about developing those sugars in the meat and the veg. That's what gives you the really deep flavor. Soft veg. And you don't need to stress too much about getting caramelization on that last part. All right, it's time for the wine. And 750 mils, 20 or pork. So now you've got your wine in there, you just wanna work it um, the bottom to make sure you're scraping up all that delicious spawn from the meat and the veg. And you're gonna reduce this right down, you know, like by over half before you add the stock. I won't bore you with watching wine reduce. We'll come back when it's at the right consistency and I'll show you. All right, so we're pretty much ready to put our stock in now. I'll show you what this looks like. So I've just turned this down a bit. As you can see, we've probably re we've reduced the wine by half. Um, you don't really want to reduce it much more than that, or you kind of end up reducing it again when you put the stock in. So nice dark color, nothing stuck, you know, no burnt bits. So the bottom of the pan is clean. So it's time to add our stock. All right, we're gonna let this come up quickly and then we'll start skimming. Because you've shocked that meat with the wine, the fat will rise pretty quickly to the top. And you can just see the color difference already in the stocks. Quite dramatic. Anyway, we're just skimming. So we're just using the ladle. Uh, I'll try and get a shot of this. And we're just pushing the ladle in and just skimming the very top part off. And all that's doing is taking that layer of fat off. The bottom of the ladle in the middle of the pot, work it around and then it pushes all that top fat to the outside. And then just the tip of the ladle in and take that stuff off. And this is just important to give you a nice clean stock, or jus I should say, as your, um, so once you start simmering this to reduce it, all that happens is that fat boils into it and you get like a cloudier colored sauce. We're just gonna reduce this down. 
uh, until we're at the right consistency. Um, and about pretty soon you want to start tasting this. Brick let this come to the boil and start tasting it. Keep tasting it. Every, every time you walk past it, taste it, skim it, taste it, skim it, taste it, skim it, until it comes to the right flavor or the right thickness. So, so what's going to happen basically is this house-made stock with all the extra gelatin in it is going to thicken a lot faster. Um, so it's, it is actually important to develop more flavor in it because it's going to thicken faster. This one with the shop brought stock uh, isn't going to thicken as easy. And in fact, I predict we're going to get to the point where we're happy with the flavor and we can't reduce it anymore because it's going to go too salty before we have to intervene and thicken it ourselves. And in that case, we'll use cornstarch. So yeah, I'll check back in when we're about halfway. In the meantime, I'll just be skimming, tasting, skimming, tasting. All right, so we're an hour in. So this is the store-bought stock. You can clearly see it's like not anywhere near as thick as it kind of should be, I think. It's still pretty runny, but let's have a taste. Mm. But it's pretty good, you know, it's pretty well balanced. You know, there's good meaty flavor. There's kind of nothing wrong with that at all. It's just lacking that viscosity in your mouth. Let's taste this guy. Immediately you can see it's a much darker uh, and stick to the spoon better. And flavor wise, it's, it's pretty different. Um, it's kind of unfair to do this next to each other like this because it, you kind of really grasp how different they are. But you know, there's definitely nothing wrong with this, but that's just a lot deeper, a lot richer, a lot more umami. Also needs a bit more salt. Um, but like I was saying, I'm really cautious with how much you season these at the start because you can always add to it at the end. You can't take it out. Once you over season the sauce like this, it's done. There's no saving it. So be careful with your salt. But yeah, you know, far, far kind of more viscosic. You know, it, it coats the, your mouth, coats the root of your mouth nicely. So these are pretty close to being done. So, so I'll come back soon when these are ready to go and we'll pass them. Um, we'll probably have to thicken this, like I was saying, with corn flour and make sure the season's cracked wrap this up all right we are ready to pass these before we finish them and check the seasoning it's been like two hours i think just over two hours and i've already turned this one off 20 minutes before i turned the the store brought one off this is what we call a chinois a fine chinois uh it's basically a really fine sieve just be careful make sure you can instead of being doing what i just did then you can just ladle it out and don't push on the stuff don't push try and get all the liquid out all you're gonna do is push through by like, little bits of you know sinew and all this little weird stuff if you want a really nice clear stock we just tap it so interesting there we've got sort of 101.7 liters there the great thing with stocks and sauces is use uh, ribbon sauce like this is that they freeze really really well so put them into a nice clean air type container in the freeze freezer uh, in like batches that are kind of relevant for how many people you feed on a regular basis they freeze beautifully. I deliberately don't reduce my stocks completely. You know, I get them 75%, 80% of the way there, because uh, then you can always always finish them off and you can even refresh them, what we call refresh, refreshing your juice um, to order. So, you now I'll put it in a smaller saucepan like we've got here and just bring it down to the right consistency right before you serve it. So I was really pleasantly surprised with how this came out. We'll talk about the differences in flavor in a second. You know, I haven't thickened this at all yet, but I was really pleasantly surprised. And then from the same amount of liquid that we started with as the other one, so four liters, we don't even have a liter here. So we've probably got, I don't know, 750, 800 mils. So pretty drastic, the amount of difference. And you know, it's a much bigger bucket, but almost a liter more, all right? Um, and that's not like terribly surprising. You know, like we always knew at the start of this, we're gonna to have to reduce this one a lot more. The flavor, you know, the depth of flavor just wasn't quite there. And you can see there's still some fat that's settling on top. So there's still a bit of skin that needs to come off. Let's start here, the taste. And I'm really impressed with how, how much it did thicken up. There's nothing wrong with that at all. And in fact, if I got served that in most restaurants in the world, I wouldn't even complain about it. Went to the top end of French one, I might have something to say about it. There is nothing wrong with that at all, right? Like it's complex, it's rich. It doesn't coat your roof your mouth like I kind of like, but we kind of knew that going into this. And it wasn't that hard to make. Don't get scared off by making juice because you don't have, you know, the right ingredients. Don't be afraid to just grab some shelf stock and make a sauce like this to go with your steak next time. I think a lot of chefs often get caught up in this. You know, they, 
they kind of aren't great home cooks because they don't improvise very well and they want everything to be perfect. Well, this is one of those examples where it doesn't have to be perfect, yeah? Is this like technically correct? Not quite. Will, will your family or friends even know the difference? Absolutely not, unless their palate is highly tuned and they're like a, a professional chef or a som or someone in the industry themselves. Even then, they're probably not gonna know the difference. So don't be afraid to make a sauce. Don't be afraid to use a shelf stable brought stock. It's not the worst thing in the world. By all means, if you have the time and the resources and the patience, make your own stock from, from scratch. Make a big batch, freeze it down, use it as you need it. But don't let that get in the way of you making, starting to make sauces. Because like anything in life, the more you make them, the better you get them. After that little rant, let's taste this one. You know, they taste different. There's no question, right? It's got much more umami. That's the standout feature, I think, in the sauce of this one. You know, the complexity is a lot is a lot more. They both need a little bit of salt, but that's you know that's nothing that we can't fix immediately. In fact, let's do it right now. Mm. Instantly lifts it, right? It's properly seasoned stuff, and it's literally the difference between a small pinch and all that liquid, and it really lifts it. And the same here. You know, the difference between a little pinch is pretty is pretty drastic. This, I mean, you could serve this like this, right? You can thicken this slightly with a little corn flour, um, and that's what I'm, you know, I probably would be leaning towards doing. So I'm making a slurry, so I'd start with like a heaped teaspoon of corn flour into a couple of tablespoons of cold water, mix that around, pour it into this, over the heat, and whisk it in. And you don't want this to be thick. It'll just give it a slightly more viscosic feeling in your mouth. But that's it, guys. That's my opinion on an entry-level way into sourcing. I never went down the saucy air section in a, in a very fine dining hotel. So, um, you know, I've got a pretty a pretty solid kind of base level understanding of sauces, but by no means am I like a complete expert on sauces. But I think this kind of style of sauce is really achievable at home, whether you're doing a short, a store brought stock or, or, um, or you're making yourself stock at home or something in between, right? Like if your butcher, if your butcher shop sells a good stock, um, if you're buying, you know, a different brand that's a, a bit better, some some supermarkets sell some kind of chilled stocks as well. This is a basic recipe to get you started. Um, you know, the key thing is that it's a, you know, a recipe, you know, especially in chefing worlds, recipes are guides. You know, you need to use your ingenuity. You need to use your, you know, what you think is right. Because what you, you know, taste is subjective. Everyone tastes differently. So don't forget that. Um, make sure you're tasting as you go. You know, get the fundamentals right, get good color on your meat at the start, get good color on your veg, reduce your wine by half before you add the stock and then taste it. When you think it's ready, it's ready. And don't let anyone else tell you otherwise because it doesn't matter. Anyway guys, thanks for watching. Please chuck us a like down below, a subscribe if you're not, click that bell icon on and I'll see you next week for another recipe. And if you've got an idea about something that you'd like me to elaborate on that you see me doing on my short format stuff, then leave it in the comments. and. Uh, you never know, I might pick what you want to learn more about. Take care, guys. Peace.